Hey guys, and welcome back, it's Piotr from Book Photos, and they will be doing a panorama photographies from Carl Zeitz, Jena, Tessar, Lenz, which were produced around 1975. Photos. I was doing the photos on Canon 80D, you can see this in short, the short is linked up in the top right corner, check it out, and let's make a panel, edit this, and see how it actually looks on the lens from almost 50 years ago. So this is a fancy photo, we click file, new panorama, add, and those are a couple of sets I created. I will choose those photos here, given that they have the highest resolution because they are in portrait mode. Let's click open. And when we are here, let's just click stitch panel and wait a minute for Affinity to do its magic. It might, it, it might take a while, remember about that. Of course, the faster the PC, the better, that's the bottom line. CPU is your number one priority in that case. Okay, so this is our preview. We can do a lot of previews and then we can just simply Choose the preview you want from different photos and click OK. Give it a second, we need to render this. As you can see here, there are slight edges. This is how Affinity actually stitches all the photographies together so we can see the process pretty much as it is going. Remember to always check the edges, especially if there are straight lines like the horizon here. We'll check it up in a minute. And let's see how it looks. It's pretty dark, obviously. Let's click in paint music area, so we will have the edges filled out by the in paint tool, the smart algorithms. And let's just click apply. It might take a minute, bear with me. Okay, and here we have our panel. Pretty much the easiest part is I'm doing this, is go to develop persona. It's pretty much the basic sliders you can use on any photography. As you can see here on the right. Let's pump up the exposure a little bit, but not too much. As you can see the light and the reflection is getting already pure white, we don't want that. Let's go to shadows and highlights and lower down the highlights a little bit and then try to increase exposure a little bit more. Yeah, unfortunately it will be white still. Let's just get back to have at least some of the color. Okay, and let's just boost the shadows like that. Great. Highlights. Maybe you want a little bit more highlights. I mean, the sun is already pretty white, but I would like to have a little bit more texture in the reflection. Okay, so there's that. And guys, as you can see, there are some issues like here and here. I don't know if this is actually the lens or this is the stitching, but we'll see in a minute on a single photo, how does it look, we'll take a, we'll pretty much pixel peep, something I usually don't like to do, but just for the sake of argument and checking out the lens. Okay guys, this is pretty much a perfect photo, as you can see here, it's pretty sharp, given that the lens has 45 years around. Let's... Lens correction, well, we can do that. Chromatic aberrations, I don't really see anything in particular here. There aren't many edges. So let's try and do some noise removal. Maybe this will go away and everything will be a lot smoother. To be honest, that panel isn't the best. It's very vanilla and boring, but unfortunately the only clouds, as you can see, are here and here. This is a very hazy image, nothing in the sky. 
pretty much boring as hell. But we wanted to try this lens. I really wanted to try out this lens on a on a Canon HD, and it's pretty much awesome as far, as far as I can tell. The bubble bokeh is great, but I will do a different video about that. And let's just add a tad of luminance. And to be honest, I would make actually that ground pure black. Sorry, not that. Let's put down it also not. We don't need that. Let's try to add a little bit of contrast. As you can see, all those yellow parts, this is pretty much pure black. So if you would like to print this, this would be just simply pure black. But I would like to still have some detail. Okay, let's click develop. And we'll try to fix those smudges with in painting tool. This is pretty much 60 megapixels, 63 megapixels. Okay, so that's a lot, obviously. As you can see, can ATD 0, 0.0 millimeters because the dummy adapter I used for the lens, it, it has no connection to the camera itself, so camera thinks that there is no lens on it. So it's really hard to use the light meter. It pretty much cannot do it. You just simply have to snap a photo, check on the live view, snap a photo, check on the live view, etc, etc, and then compensate accordingly. Or you can, of course, use the viewfinder for that. But it won't be as exact as the viewfinder, because one thing you can see in the viewfinder, the other thing is your, is your live view and the calculations, given that there is aperture 0, 0.0. Okay, so we have that. Let's try and fix with the in-painting tool those smudges here. Just simply use the in-paint tool move over the smudge and like that's it we don't need to do anything else let's try and remove that okay it actually works i'm happy with that let's try and remove that it's this is a little bit hazy weird this is pretty much clearing up the image as it is Some small parts we can, of course, leave intact. Here is something. Maybe this is something on the beach in the sand that is reflecting. This is pretty much, in general, a little bit lighter. Probably, maybe the lens has some issues there. Okay, this is a beard. Let's remove this for the sake of having everything as straight as possible. Let's remove from the water some minor things that might look like just simple trash and let's try to keep everything as tidy as possible those are birds on the water so i will not be removing those and pretty much that's there's that Okay, so we have our panel, pretty much, let's just say that this is the finished retouch. I would like to have this in a ratio of 3 to 1, because I like to print my panels like that. They look very, very well, and I actually get a cheap frame that I can buy in my local store. So, so there's that, and how can we frame this? Of course, this is the one frame I would think about, but I would, in the end... I like to just simply put everything straight straight down in the middle and there's that it just simply has to be as geometrical as possible so what can we do now this is pretty bendy i mean after all this is the beach it doesn't have to be straight perfect but let's make it straight perfect just for our sakes use the move tool guys and make a line somewhere around here Let's try and... Okay, let's click Rasterize and Trim. It will trim the image this one, to our crop. And let's try to maybe make the horizon as straight as possible. Let's grab another line and set it up. Yeah, this is pretty much more or less perfect as as you can see this is a little bit higher this should be a little bit lower this is 
this should be higher this is pretty much perfect this is also a little bit lower okay so what can we do now we go to warp mesh tool we click on those points we click on the points that when where we think that everything's perfect or our line is intersecting the other parts that are above or below and we simply move that to our blue line so this will be as perfect as possible here this is okay this is also let's find the intersection somewhere around here sorry one and then let's drag down this until the blue level this is obvious this obviously has to go up a bit like that maybe another point here just a little bit it doesn't have to be perfect it's a bitch it's like a reality it's not painted from a line and yes this has to be lower around somewhere here okay something like that great so we unbend the line the horizon and the bitch click the move tool and get rid of the lines and i would say it looks very very nice i mean this is a boring photo don't get don't, don't get me wrong i'm not all oh, oh yeah this is great no it's nice but it's very very dark let's try to do something with this let's use shadows and highlights once more let's try to boost up the shadows let's see the histogram okay this looks awesome highlights yeah not really because the sun gets pretty much white but yeah i don't like it like this but still we can't do much about that because it will be too grayish in my opinion if we go like that okay so open up the shadows i would also add a little bit of contrast to everything maybe not real let's try to boost the saturation a little bit i would like to have a little bit more yellows to be honest so everything will be a lot warmer let's try to boost the yellow yes okay this is obviously noise but from there we can go a little bit here and i would select the red and try to make it a bit yellow as you can see here everything's yellow here we have zero okay just like that yeah just a little bit like four degrees in affinity units and yes let's try to fix those shadows a little bit more maybe not really because we actually then see this and i would prefer this to be black actually maybe just a little bit of contrast that's it but we can do this differently let's use levels and just simply make the black level a lot more black oh sorry not here need to move the layer and just black and everything what levels does is if something is almost black if you pump up the percentage here it goes pure black and that's it so let's just use one or two percent to get everything a little bit blacker especially this here this right down here and that's it guys this is how you can stitch a panel and how it looks after doing this with a 45 47 ish year old lens you will see the exact day that the lens was produced in a minute uh, see the short how I created the photo and how I traveled there and that's it thanks for tuning in if you have any questions leave me a comment like and see you later hope you liked it bye for now